Hey, welcome back, everyone. So last week, I got an email from a radio station out of Charleston, West Virginia. They wanted to talk. It was WTSQ 88.1 in downtown Charleston. Now, I talked to Josh Gaffin. He's the host of the show, and he had some dude named Andy Brubin there with him. Josh was great. Andy had a bit of an attitude. Let me explain why I say that. When I said that they had a drug problem there in West Virginia. He was in the background going, we also have a music problem. We also have an art problem. We also have a restaurant problem. You know, just, okay, I get it, Andy. Charleston has all the things that other cities have, but in some cases, maybe better. Apparently, Andy thought I had enough time to add all those things in my 40 seconds I devoted to Charleston. While talking to them, Andy mentioned that he hated the Yankees, as do I, and it was all better. I wanted to give him a hug. Maybe even one of those uncomfortable hugs. You know the type when you hold someone a little too long, a little too tight, and then you whisper something in their ear to make them uncomfortable, like, you smell so different when you aren't asleep. You know, then you walk away and you don't explain what you're talking about. That's a lot of fun, by the way. The confused look on their face, it's priceless. And it usually lasts for a good half an hour until they get enough courage to ask you what the hell you were talking about. Try it sometime, you'll see what I'm talking about. Anyway, so I guess they noticed that I made the top 10 worst cities in the U.S. and Charleston was ranked number one. For the most part, it, it kind of does suck because of the opiate crisis. Now, they wanted to point out that it's getting better, which it is. Once you get past the opiate problem, which it is getting better as well, the place is great. Now, after doing some research, and I called one of my friends that lived there, and I talked to him about Charleston. He said, yeah, in fact, it is getting better. And I did my research, and I agreed with him. And so I'm going to make a video about it, and I'm going to list why it is. And I'm going to use the title that Andy, from the radio station, suggested I use. So here's my top ten reasons Charleston is the most amazing city in the universe. Number ten. They are too far from Polka, West Virginia. Now, if you're saying to yourself right now, why does that matter? Then you haven't seen all my videos. Polka High School is a high school not too far from Charleston. And in their great wisdom, they decided to name the high school football team's mascot, or all the athletics mascot, the Dots. So they are the Polka Dots. God bless America. I love that name. Not sure if I were a high school athlete, I'd want to go to Polka, West Virginia for that reason alone. But, I mean, as an adult, I think it's... I think it's great. I think it's hysterical that these kids go to school. They got to tell everyone they're a polka dot, you know? I don't know. I just like that one. Number nine, the food scene. When I was interviewed, they asked me if I like food. I told them I'm five foot nine. I weigh 220 pounds. So of course I do. You don't get to look this way by not eating. When they asked if we had good food in Portland, I said, yeah, we have some of the finest food trucks around. And that's no joke. We do. If you haven't been here and you don't know about this, you'll probably think we eat lunch at construction sites every day. It's so much more than that. So as far as Charleston goes, I did some research and I found out that they do. They have some really great places to eat in Charleston. So I called my friend who lives there and he went off about how good some of these places are. He also said that these aren't food trucks, so I need to wear a shirt. I guess he was listening to the interview yesterday. He said the places to go are Pies and Pints, Dem Two Brothers, and Susie's Hamburgers. He also told me about one time at lunch from work, he ate at Dem Two Brothers, or Dem Two as he called it, and he had ribs, barbecued ribs, and he sat in his car when he was getting ready to go back to work and turned on the car, then turned off the car, went back in and ordered enough for dinner. And then he was back there the next day for lunch. That's some good barbecue right there, he said. So yeah, those are the places to go. Now that's not the fine dining establishment. There's plenty of those, but those are the places that the common folk like me go. Number eight, the art scene. Charleston, like most state capitals, pride themselves on their art scene. And Charleston has a good art scene. Austin, Texas does not. They have a toilet seat museum just outside Austin. Look it up. Charleston has more than just a few places devoted to the arts. One of the best places is the Clay Center for Arts and Science. It's a center for the performing arts, visual arts, and science located at Clay Square in Charleston. Because all these things are housed in one building, it's one of the only few of its kind in the nation. And before anyone from Texas asks, they don't celebrate the art of toilet seats here. Sorry. Number seven, the great outdoors. 
The Kanawha State Forest is a 9,000-acre forested park located about seven miles from downtown Charleston, and it is probably the most normal named park they have in Charleston. After that, they have the Cato Park, which I'm not sure if it wasn't named after O.J. Simpson's friend, Cato Kalin, but that's the first thing I thought of when I saw it. They also have Magic Island Park, which isn't an island, and the cherry on top of the Charleston Parks and Rec Department is Coonskin Park. Coonskin Park. I don't know about that one. In reality, Charleston is nature. It is the state capital hidden in the woods along the banks of a river. It's beautiful. Besides the parks, they have miles and miles of wooded hills. Being the type of person, like I am, who just loves to go into the woods and walk around, I get excited when I look at the satellite map of Charleston. It's just, there's not that many buildings. It's beautiful. If you like the outdoors, hiking, hunting, fishing, and whatnot, you'll love Charleston too. Number six, the history. After the American Revolutionary War, people started heading west. Pioneers is what they called these motivated, rugged folks. Some of the lazier and not-so-rugged pioneers made it to where the Kanawha and Elk Rivers meet and said, hey, good enough, and started early settlements. The rest pushed on to Oregon. Just kidding. They probably got to this area and said, it can't get much better than this. I'm staying here. And they pitched a tent. Capitalizing on the many resources made Charleston an important part of Virginia and West Virginia history, the town continued to grow until the Civil War began. The state of Virginia succeeded from the Union, and Charleston was divided between Union and Confederate loyalty. On September 13, 1862, the Union and Confederate armies met in the Battle of Charleston. Although the Confederate states was victorious, occupation of the city was short-lived. Union troops returned just six weeks later and stayed through the end of the war. Today, Charleston is the largest city in the state and the state capital. Now, that's just the tip of the iceberg with this place. I encourage you to read up on the history of Charleston and West Virginia in general. West Virginia, a lot of times, is kind of a forgotten state. It shouldn't be. It's very important to this country. Number five, axes and ales. So a deli owner named Chadrick Harper was working the counter at his Lucky Dill Deli one day and thought, if I'm going to make it here in the big city, I need to up my game. Seeing that Subway had kind of cornered the sandwich technology game, he thought he needed to think outside the box. And outside the box he went. He decided to knock down the wall of his deli and open up a craft beer and axe throwing place next door. Let that sink in. This place is a bar that has axe-throwing lanes, like a dartboard, but for axes. People are drinking beer and throwing axes. This is the only place on earth that people don't get alarmed when someone says, there's a drunk guy in the deli with an axe. I would fly to Charleston just to do this. Get back on a plane when I'm done. Head back back. But I would fly out specifically to do this. You know the local cops there dread the day they're going to have to go there and break up a bar fight. <laughs> it's, they got to be... Pulling straws to see who has to go to that call. Number four, the military. West Virginia is a very U.S. veteran-friendly state. They have so many programs, I would have to make a two-hour video to just explain half of them. Here's just a few examples. They have no fees for driving, hunting, or fishing licenses. Military retirement pay is exempt for the first 2000 If you're active or reserve and you get deployed, you get $600 to help you out, you know, getting your crap together before you go. If you receive a Purple Heart or a Medal of Honor, your college is free. Businesses get big tax breaks for hiring vets. The list goes on and on. Now, that's just the state of West Virginia. Charleston has some of their own as well. Now, on a personal note, two of the hardest working soldiers I ever served with were from Charleston. Hard working, hard drinking. That was what they were known for. They worked hard during the week and they drank hard during the weekend. And oddly, both were told at different occasions to stop urinating off the roof of the barracks. I always thought that was kind of weird. I don't know if that's a tradition in Charleston, but they both did it quite a few times if I remember correctly. Number two, the music scene. The music scene in Charleston and all of West Virginia is one of the best right now in this country. It would be considered by most people as going off. 
They have a ton of bands coming out of that area, like Quiet, The Company Stores, Sly Roosevelt, and up in Morgantown, they have Sleepwalker, who I've really been listening to a lot lately. Some people get caught up in this trap where they think that places like West Virginia, Iowa, Utah, Idaho, that they can't possibly have any great local music, especially alternative or something like that. They think it's only going to be country music or some just some prejudice like that. They're so wrong about Charleston. Charleston, West Virginia is a prime example. A lot of music is coming out of there for three reasons. Talent, hard work, and the number one reason on this list. And number one, radio station... WTSQ 88.1. WTSQ is a local independent radio station out of Charleston, West Virginia, and they are truly independent. They are the way radio was when it was great. The DJs got to pick the music. Not some corporation lackey. Now, I grew up in the Los Angeles area, and we had a great independent radio station called KROQ, K Rock. Now, it's still there, it's just not like it used to be. It's corporate. Sometime in the 1990s, they got bought out and started playing the same 20 songs all day long. It might not even be 20, it's probably closer to 12. And it kind of breaks my heart. I really enjoyed it when I was young. Everyone did. WTSQ reminds me of the early days of K Rock. The DJs play what they want, when they want. And they all seem to have a good focus on local talent. Now, they have different genres also. It's not just alternative or rock or anything like that. I've heard all kinds of stuff. Folk, I've heard some country on there. Heard some political talk on there too. It's it's a really neat station. And just this week, I've picked up on three bands I've never even heard of. And I'm pretty much up on my music. One of the bands is The Sea, The Sea. As in The Ocean, The Ocean, not the letter C, C. The Sea, The Sea. They're out of New York City, but I heard them on 88.1. And that's a perfect example of what a radio station should do for its listeners. It should introduce them to new things and make you want to go out and buy their music. That's what radio stations were kind of invented for. And they got away from that. Now, the other cool thing is, these days you don't have to be in the city to listen to the radio station. You don't have to live in Charleston, or West Virginia for that matter. I'm in Oregon. I've been listening to them all week. I downloaded their app. WTSQ helps make Charleston the most amazing city in the universe. All right, everyone, that's my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you leave me a comment. Give me a big thumbs up. Give me a big thumbs down, whatever you want to do. If this is your first time here or 20th time here and you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Charleston is a great city. It really is. They have been going through some stuff the last couple years with their drug epidemic there and all that. They're trying to pull themselves out of it. Just because they got that problem doesn't mean they don't have some amazing things going on here. I hope this video highlighted some of those amazing things. I mean, what city doesn't have some major problems? Theirs just happens to be in the news right now. But I'm going to leave you a link down below for, you know, like I always say, the things I use in case you want to pick something up. I'm also going to leave a link down there for the WTSQ station. You guys give them a listen. See if you like it. Everyone have a good day. Thanks for watching. Be nice to each other. Okay, Andrew Rubin is here. Andy, thank you. Welcome back. Okay. On the phone, all the way from the great state of Oregon, friends in the West, we have a fellow by the name of Briggs. We know Briggs from his YouTube channel, The World According to Briggs. Briggs, are you there? I am. How are you on this fine afternoon slash morning? Oh, I got a little bit of a cold, but I'm doing okay. Now, how long has this cold been? been taking place for. <laughs> it's been about three days. Uh, they kind of rough breathing. So if you hear any heavy breathing, I'm not getting really into the conversation. I'm just having a hard time breathing. Okay, now what I'm trying I'm trying to see if there's a correlation between a video that you posted that we're gonna talk about from Appalachian voodoo and your and your uh, illness. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. I had a lot of shade thrown my way since I put up that video and a couple others. Uh, okay. I, the other day, I'm minding my own business, 7 o'clock in the morning, I'm on my 40th cup of coffee, playing with my 12 cats and my 3 dogs, and my dear pal from the radio station, Joshua Bean, sends me a message that, oh my god, Joshua, you need to see this video, and the video was titled, The Top 10 Worst Towns in America, Viewers Version, and it also said, the 10 worst towns in America, guess what hillbilly town is number one? So I said, ooh, it's, it's obviously got to be Huntington, West Virginia, or, you know, maybe it's Asheville, North Carolina. So I watched the video. 
Number 10, Briggs, was Ironton, Ohio. And I was like, yeah, I guess so. Uh -huh. Got to number five, and I'm a New Yorker. I'm from New York City, and at number five was Utica. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes. And, and he's a New Yorker as well, so we're like, yeah. We get to number one. I'm thinking, Briggs, I'm thinking, I'm going to call my friends in Huntington and go, ah, ha! You guys are the worst town in America. Oh, my gosh. Charleston, West Virginia. Yes. It's the worst town in America. And Hillbilly Town. Okay, Briggs, you and I are going to talk for a second. First of all, where, where in Oregon are you? I'm just outside of Portland, about 10 minutes outside of Portland. Okay, it's interesting that you're from Portland because Charleston, and you know, while we have you on the phone, uh -huh. you're going to learn a lot about Charleston. So be prepared to be on the phone for the next nine hours, Briggs. Educate me, please. Um, a lot of people say to me, Josh, you're from Brooklyn. Does Charleston remind you of Williamsburg? And I'm like, you know, it does. And I've got a lot of friends, Briggs, in Portland. I've been to Portland many times. I love it. It's uh, after Charleston in New York City. It's my third, it's, it's my third home. Uh -huh. People are saying, you know, Charleston has this real Portland feel to it with all the, the art, the bands, the food, the weird people. I'm like, yes, it does. So when I saw that you were from the